All righty. All right, Doctrines of Demons 3. Tonight we're going to have a look at the balance of the different Jesuses that are out there. So let's move right along. Um, tonight we'll discover that Jesus that we know and serve, the Son of God, Son of Man, the Savior of the world, is not the same Jesus that the religions have. Religious people, different cults, different sects, have their own Jesus, they create their own Jesus. And last week we discovered the Mormon Jesus mm -hmm. and the uh, Jehovah Witnesses Jesus. We can see that they serve another Jesus, as we saw. I mean, they gave him uh, different titles and what he can do and what he can't do. And it's not the Jesus Christ we serve as Lord and Savior, the Jesus that's our King of Kings and our Lord of Lords and God Almighty. So, Tonight we'll explore and learn more about an, an, about another Jesus, which is out in the world, and a different spirit and a different gospel as given to us by Paul the Apostle, as we discussed last week. But I just want to just go through it, get a refresh our memory. For if he who comes preaches another Jesus, whom we have not preached, or if you receive a different spirit, which you have not received, or by a different gospel, which you have not accepted, you may well put up with it. And if we look around us today, we can actually see how many different Jesus there is, how many different types of spirit there is, and a different type of gospel. And yet we put up with it. And that's frightening because what Paul is saying is, you may well put up with all this that he, he, he's, he's, he's told us and warned us about. And the problem is, how do we go about getting people to be aware of the true Jesus Christ, the one and only Holy Spirit, the true Spirit of God, and also the only gospel of Christ? And the only way we can do that is for us to be able to one-on-one -on -one make disciples, spend time with people, share the word of God with them, help them and help them to explore the word of God at a, at a, at a different level. Okay, not the false way or the false religion people. All right, tonight we're going to talk about the oneness Pentecostal Jesus. They um, uh, have a theology that denies the Trinity and teaches that God is a single person who manifested as father in the creation and as the father of the son and in the son of our redemption and as the Holy Spirit in our regeneration. So therefore, Jesus is just another manifestation of God. I don't know if that makes sense to you, but um, it will make some a difference now. So the biggest and the most uh, active um a pastor in America that advocates this at a, at a high level is T.D. Jakes. You all have heard of him. You all, if you watch TBN and Daystar and all the other stars on on and that uh, that air, all these false false teachers out there. T.D. Jakes has a huge following in the USA, and he has a big church, and is a oneness Pentecostal himself. He denies the Trinity. So the question I have to ask myself is: How can a person? Profess to be a born-again believer and deny the Trinity. Because if you deny the Trinity, you have to take out the pages or tear the, the page out of your Bible where it talks about the Trinity and the power of the Trinity. So the Holy Bible offers us many instances and to prove the Trinity. And I want us to look at the scriptures that does that. If we go to Genesis 1 verses 26, if you have your Bible, um, you can have a look and make make some highlights in your Bible so that it's all colorful and you remember it that way. Uh, Genesis 1 verse 26, then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. So the definition of us and our is a, a definitive plural statement, meaning more than one. I think this alone should be enough for us to, to be able to say that, hang on, if God is talking about us and our as in a plural sense, there's not just one. He would have said that I, 
okay, and he doesn't. So however, for our own study and knowledge, let us look at some more scriptures that does this. Matthew 28, verses 19. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. John 14, verse 26 says, but the helper, in Greek we say parakletos, uh, which means the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, Jesus was saying. And so we can see that there's a distinct, the three in one, okay? So we have the Father, who is the Father, the God, God the Father. Then we have God the Son. God the Son is a separate individual, but a part of the one. Now you all know, you all know how this works. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but they're all in one God. God the Father is the Father. He does all things that the Father does. The Son is the Son that has come to earth. He came to be the sacrificial lamb for us. He died to reconcile us back to the Father. Then we have the Holy Spirit, which is the Paragletos. It's the helper. It's the comforter. The Holy Spirit that lives within us. Remember um, 1 Corinthians uh, um, 3, 6, 3, 16, where it says that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the temple of the Holy Spirit is us. Mm -hmm. So we can see Father, Son, Holy Spirit, three different entities, but in one, which is the Father. Acts 2, verse 4. Acts chapter 1, verses 8. Acts 2, verses 38. 1 Corinthians 6, 19. All the scripture shows that there are three entities. Okay, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, it is a frightening how many people are, dece are deceived by this man's theology. So tonight we'll discover another Jesus, which is the Roman Catholic Church Jesus. Now remember, we are using documents and quotes from the priests. All the information is from the Catechism of the RCC, the Roman Catholic Church. This is to protect us from any backlash from people that watch the video and get back at us and say, oh, you just, you're just smudging the people. How can you talk that about fellow Christians? Uh, we've had this before. So this teaching is to prevent us from being deceived so that you and I know that when they talk about a Jesus, it's not the Jesus we know. The Bible could be Jesus. So Satan has deceived many people by twisting the word of, of God. Our goal is to gain as much knowledge so that we are not deceived by any religion or any religious peoples. So let's start. So Jesus Christ is truly God. This is their statement. Jesus Christ is truly God, the second person of the Trinity, the Son, the eternal word, who with the Father and the Holy Spirit always was, is, and always will be. Simple, no problem. Don't have a problem with that. So Jesus Christ is truly man because he has the nature of man having a body and soul. So Jesus Christ was not always man, but he became man in the womb of Virgin Mary, his mother. We don't have a problem with that. That's scriptural. So the first two slides in the statements there is, is there's no there's nothing erroneous as we so as we proceed we will discover how the RCC doctrine becomes a pagan religion and there's nothing to do with Christianity at all. They've actually taken the the Christian faith and they've actually um, twisted it in such a way that it's no longer Christianity. And we'll discover this as we go. It is sad to believe that almost one billion people are deceived and will not go to heaven unless they repent and turn away from the Roman Catholic Church, if we can call it a church. So the Bible is very clear regarding theology from Genesis to Revelation. Um, nobody is allowed to take away from this book, Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19. So the one billion people that are out there, 
um, that are Roman Catholics. Um, some of them call themselves Roman Catholics, but they're not really. They just want to be associated with um, the church. Okay, so the Bible is very clear regarding theology from Genesis to Revelation. And I want us to look at the book of Revelation 22, verses 18 and 19, so that we can see. For I testify to everyone who hear the words of this prophecy of this book, if anyone adds to these things, God will add to him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, if anyone takes away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part from the book of life from the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So we can see here, if we have the scriptures, no one can just add to the Bible and, and subtract and no, we don't like this, so we, we won't practice it. And we don't like that. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna um, uh, put that to practice. So we'll just put a line through it. We can't do that. And you'll find that in all of this, a lot of people actually do that. And in this instance, the RCC do that. So let's have a look at it. M Mary is the all holy ever virgin mother of God. And this is on the catechism of the Catholic Church. Here also referred to as the CCC. 721 means the, it's the, the paragraph or the clause that they have in the catechism. Um, Firstly, Mary is all holy ever virgin mother of God. Um, that's not correct. But we'll, we'll just cover that a little in the next one. And it also says that Mary, uh, Mary is the queen over all things. She's also our advocate, our helper, our benefactress, our mediatrix, who is full of grace, the mother of God, and our mother. This is what they believe. This comes out of their documents. It's actually frightening. So let's see what the word of God says about what they claim. Luke 146 says, my, Mary speaking, she says, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit has rejoiced in God, my savior. Mary acknowledged Jesus as her Lord and God and savior. Luke 1 verse 38, then Mary said, behold, the maid servant, the servant of the Lord, let it be according to your word. And the angel departed. She accepted the fact that Jesus is going to be her Lord and she will be the maidservant to her Lord. Nowhere, nowhere in the Bible does it say what the Roman Catholics believe. So if we look at John 14, verse 6, Jesus said clearly, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus makes it clear in his statement. If he'd included his mother Mary, he would have said so. But Jesus never, ever, ever mentioned his, his mother or gave her any entitlement or gave her any title. So Mary recognized Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, and she said that she was a servant to the Lord. Nowhere in Scripture... In the New Testament, do we read anywhere that Mary is elevated to queen of all things, the helper, the mediatrix? Let's look at those titles. So this statement is highly blasphemous, as the comforter is the Holy Spirit. So what the Roman Catholic Church has done is they've given Mary the role of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so John 14 verse 26 says, but the helper, the parakletos, the comforter, the Holy Spirit, you see? And if you look at what they were saying, that Mary is the helper, Mary is the comforter, but it's not. John 14, verse 26, there is that the Holy Spirit is the helper. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So let's have a look at this statement, the man Christ Jesus. So when the Bible puts the statement, Christ Jesus, it's talking from God to man. When we talk about Jesus from man to God, it's always Jesus Christ. So we can see here the importance of this. Nowhere in scripture does it mention that Mary is our mother. 
only that God is our Father and Jesus is our Lord and Savior. Do you not think for one minute that if Mary played this major role, that the entire New Testament, somewhere, somewhere in there, the four Gospels, the letters that Paul writes, and the letters that John writes, in the book of Revelation, do you think it would be there to guide us? But no, it's not there. They say that she had no original sin. I don't understand that. And she never committed sin. That's a contradiction because Mary had other children after Jesus. Remember that Jesus had four brothers. Okay, and the Bible says clearly that he that says he has no sin is a liar and the truth of the father is not in him. So we all sin. We all live in a fallen world, including Mary and Joseph and whoever came after that. She is second only to her son. Wow. If you've read this somewhere in the New Testament, I need you to tell me, please, because I... I looked and I can't find that anywhere in the scripture. And it also says that she sits on the right hand of the majesty on high. Wow, that's blasphemous. Because there's only one that sits on the right hand of the Father, and that is Jesus Christ. So can you see what they're doing? They're taking Mary and they're elevating her and they're giving her the title, the same deity title. She was never a God. She never came from heaven. Do you understand? So what they're doing is they're putting Mary and not Jesus. Jesus is not the only one. No, no, Mary. And this is what they say. In fact, no man goes to Christ but by his mother. And this is by Pope Leo XIII. So now I have to ask myself, hold on a second. You see, the way they add and subtract to the Bible and the way they create their own Bible, it's a man-made law. It's a man-made religion. This has got nothing to do with the Jesus that we know. In fact, it's so pagan, it's, it's frightening. It was Mary who crushed the poisonous head of the most cruel serpent and brought salvation to the world. Oh, my word, I can't find that in the scriptures anywhere. All we know is that who was the person that came and brought salvation to the world? Jesus Christ. And if we look at John 3.16, I just want to quickly go there. Um, we all know it. So I just have to take my glasses. John 3, 16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Verse 17, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He is the salvation of the world. Who He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already. Because he has not believed in the name of the, the only begotten son. He doesn't talk about Mary anywhere there. And this is Jesus talking. So we can see that these people are totally deluded. They, they, they are making up stuff. And that's why religion is so toxic. It's so bad. Okay. It is she who delivers our souls from death. Wow. And continues to bring us the gifts of eternal salvation. So the question I have to ask myself, and I'm sure you're asking, well, what are these continuous gifts of eternal salvation? Jesus came as the salvation towards man. He died on the cross for us. He took our sin. 
He came out of the grave, which is the gospel of Christ. He conquered death and the grave. And then he ascended into heaven to be on the right hand of the Father. So the salvation that they're talking about is through Mary and not through Jesus Christ. So they're replacing what Jesus did on the cross. And they're saying, okay, this is all about Mary now. Oh my gosh, totally deceived. Mary, by her spiritual entering into the sacrifice of her divine son for men, Mary then again, Mary, by her spiritual entering into the sacrifice of her divine son for men, made atonement for the sins of men. Where did Mary make the sacrifice? Okay. And she didn't make the atonement for the sins of man. Jesus did that on the cross. Can you see how frightening this is? And there are almost a billion people on this planet that believe this. Having suffered for the church, Mary deserved to become the mother of all the disciples of her son, the mother of their unity. So now let's, let's take that and rip that apart a little bit. So having suffered for the church, Mary never suffered for the church. Jesus suffered for the church. Jesus was scrounged, had thorns placed on his head as a crown. He was beaten, he was kicked, he was punched, he was sworn at, he was spat upon, he was ridiculed, he suffered. He was arrested, he was um, put before the, the Roman court, they found him innocent. But it was the, the Jewish Sanhedrin, the religious Jewish people that wanted him dead. It's the religious spirit. And that's what makes it so deadly. So we can see that Mary had nothing to do. She doesn't deserve anything. She never suffered for the church at all. Okay. So how can she deserve to become the mother of all the disciples of her son? That means we are disciples of Jesus. She's not my mother. I've never accepted her as my mother. And so the mother of the unity also. Sorry, guys, we have had a power failure. I need to just start the generator. Sorry. All right, so we can we can we can move on now because I think we've we've sort of discussed that in fact. Mary's role as co-redemptrix did not cease with the glorification of her son. So they now openly are saying that. She is the co-redeemer with Jesus. That is totally blasphemous, guys. It is something that we have to make a, a note of because there's only one redeemer, and that's Jesus Christ, not Mary. Mary had nothing to do with what Jesus did. Okay, so because Christ, our redeemer, said that it was truly his body that was offering under the species of bread. And it has always been the conviction of the church of God. Um, we're going to be talking about, and, and, and um, this Holy Council now declares again that by the consecration of the bread and the wine, there takes place a change in the whole substance of the bread. So what we're going to be doing now, we're going to talk about this um, where they take uh, Holy Communion. And I'll explain it to you a little bit more about what this actually means. And it says, into the substance of the body of Christ, our Lord, and the whole substance of the wine, into the substance of his blood. Okay, so they're talking about taking communion, the blood, the death and the blood and the body to remind us of what Jesus did on the cross. 
So we're going to go through this now. So this is known as the doctrine of subtrans, sub, uh, transubstantiation. <laughs> when they take the bread and the wine, and they are taking the literal body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Now, mass is done daily, and it is the reenactment of the crucifixion. So you cannot be a Catholic if you do not believe and partake of mass. So this is their belief, and we need to be aware of what is out there that is being taught and being practiced. So in this other, another Jesus, this is not a biblical, uh, but a man-made theology where they are saying that the blood and the body of Jesus, they eating his his body and they're drinking his blood as if it was real it's gory but let's move on do not judge by sense or by taste but to grasp the truth by faith so that be fully and sorry and so be fully assured without misgiving of christ's real presence under the veils of the bread and the wine so for more information on the Catholic Jesus, um, refer to a, another Jesus by a book um, written by Roger Oakland and Tim Tello. And you can have a look at this on the, on the website. You might not want to buy it, but just read through. It basically just analyzes another Jesus that the Catholics believe. And we've just touched on just a few, a few of the things that they believe um, for us to analyze the whole Catholic um, faith will take us months because there is just so much that is goes against the face of what of what the Bible is, and it doesn't uh, um, it doesn't work with what the Bible is saying. They have their own thing. They they believe their own thing, but they use the name of Jesus so that they can be seen as a Christian entity. When in actual in actual fact, they got nothing to do. With Jesus, because it's all about Mary. Um, if you want to read more about what is spoken about on another Jesus, this is a book that you might want to just go through. Um, it's just basically what we're talking about. So the actor Mel Gibson, who acted as Jesus in the movie The Passion of Christ, he said he took mass three to four times a day so that he could feel more like Jesus when he was performing. Because of the literal body and the blood of Jesus he was partaking of. Man, man, man alive, that's paganism to a core. It's another Jesus and not the Jesus Christ we know. So the book is very resourceful on this particular issue, transubstantiation, if you want to know more about it, but I don't think we need to know too much about it. And if you want to know more it's worth reading it. It really is if you want to. I did it for the research. So now remember, this information is not for us to go bashing people over the head with our Bible and, and say, hey, you know, you're serving the wrong God. It's for us, purely for our Bible study, so that we are not deceived. And that's what it's all about, for us not to be deceived. When we speak to Catholic people, we know now what they believe, it gives us a greater knowledge of what they are doing and what they are practicing. They are not born again believers. You cannot be a born again believer and believe what they are practicing. It's a different spirit, number one. It's a different Jesus, number two. And number three, it's a different gospel. Because what they're believing is not in the gospel of Christ. It's not in the four gospels. It's nowhere in the Bible. The next one is the Hollywood Jesus. <laughs> I'm sorry, I love the picture. <laughs> as they, as they, they, they um, show this Hollywood Jesus. Okay, I don't want to start with Hollywood Jesus today. I want us to have a pause and I want us to have a, a discussion like we did last week on exactly um, the, the Roman Catholic um, Jesus and what they believe. 
And if Danny is still online, I would like for Danny to to give us a, a view on being an ex-Catholic. He knows a few people as well. Um, Bo, I know you're online, and Cheryl, you're online. I don't know where Michelle has gone. She must have uh, got cut off as well on her side. Sure, this load shedding is terrible. Anyway, Bo, from your side, have you got anything? Cheryl, have you got anything to share? 